And this is a free podcast from the BBC. For more information, you can go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash radio2. I took you... delivery of a fantastic outfit this oh, week. No. Oh. It's, not, it's not some superhero, is it? Maybe. Oh, it's for the superhero thing you run about. Oh, yeah, for the San Diego Comic Convention. Is it um, a normal superhero or something you've created and drawn, had made for yourself? Or is it one that you get off the shelf? A little bit of a crowd pleaser. (laughs) Do you remember the television cartoon series, A Pokemon? Yes, I do. You're not Uh, going as a Pokemon. I'm not going as a Pokemon, no. I'm going as Ash, the young boy who carries the Pokeball. (laughs) I've got everything. I've got the big blaggy blue trousers, got the waistcoat with the design in it. I've got the baseball cap with the Pokeball. He was about 11. What are you you implying? What are you now? 40 what? 48. (laughs) Are you saying I can't carry off 11? Are you saying I can't carry off 11? Have you seen me dance? (laughs) You'll be dragged out of there. I dance like an enthusiastic 11 year old. I'm looking great. I'm telling you, I can't wait. I tried on. It's got little gloves on. Yeah. I wore it downstairs the other day. Oh, scared the life out of Jane. (laughs) It did. What's she going as? Uh, she's going as a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I bought her a couple of outfits. I, I bought mm. her a kind of sexy cheerleader's outfit yeah. from Manga Thing. Mm. Barely covered her buttocks. <laughs> Obviously, for me, that made the design work even better, but she was not interested. So, no. no, put it away. I put it in my special drawer. Oh, did you? Yeah, I'll try, I'll try again. <laughs> You'll try it on. I've got a, dra- no, a drawer of things I, I bring out for every year. She's good. no, <laughs> put it away again. Got everything in there. Tennis outfits to work. Go mm. on. If any, any luck? No, put it yeah. away. Uh, but I was busting a move to Lady Gaga this week. Were you? Yeah, not in that outfit? No, no, no. Just um, just a normal outfit. I was out, you know, out in the club. <laughs> what club? Well, it was my daughter's 18th birthday. <laughs> so she was 18. <laughs> right. That's guaranteed to make you feel older. And where it? did you go? That combined with the fact that the morning after the party, I received in my spam box, you know, you get mm. email, something for stair lifts. <laughs> now, obviously, either they'd seen me out there or they decided, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's at the age now. I, was, I, I preferred it. I used to complain when I got the ones for the <clears throat> enlargement. Yeah. yeah. But now, stair lifts, I think I'd rather go back to that. And that one of those special baths? Stair lifts, walking baths, everything. They're all coming my way now. <laughs> Lovely cushion shaped like a donut. <laughs> So here's the thing. 18 years old, my daughter. 18 years yeah, old. There's lots I, of people out there. I want to know what club it was. I said, what It wasn't club? a club. It was a restaurant in town, but they'd be hiding upstairs. Because they're old enough to drink now, most of our friends. So they had a few drinks in there as well. Oh, and, oh, but they had a theme. It was a fancy dress theme. Okay. I mean, when I say club, there was a DJ there. Fancy dress theme, which was circus and burlesque. Oh, yeah. It's popular. And of course, you think circus and burlesque, you know. So you see a fair number of top hats. I myself favoured a top hat for Did the you? Yeah. You went as a sort of, you know, the conductor. Type. No, I just wore a top hat. Oh, right. uh, naked we- in a top hat. <laughs> No, I wore a suit, but I put a top hat. I'd been working that night. I'd done the recording of the TV show, and I went straight after it, so right, I got so. a bit late. So I popped down quickly, grabbed the suit, grabbed one of my many top hats, and went into yeah. town. Yeah, you've got uh, the top hat. Yeah. yeah, let's not dwell on that. Now, there's, uh, I'm trying to get to a story here. Let me get to the story. No, leave, like, leave just, my, I'm slightly disappointed that it's circus and blast, and you basically all you did was put a hat on. Ten years, ladies and gentlemen. Ten years <laughs> I've had to sit opposite this. <laughs> But you go on about how you've, I've tried you've to had a Pokemon costume made. Ten years I've made. tried to deliver a show for you, and ten years I've faced obstruction. Look, you've got an 18-year-old daughter who would I would have thought would want a bit more effort than you putting a hat on. She, no, here's what you don't understand, because your kids are You little. could have gone as a clown. Here's the thing. They don't care what we come as. <laughs> no, that's They're true. not in... Even if I hadn't shown up, she wouldn't have been that bothered. Oh, dear. It was her party for her and her friends. I went yeah. along just to say hi and, you know, bring the cake out and join in a bit. Yeah, OK. Anyway, circus and burlesque. So lots of people, there's a couple of the boys make the effort and dress as, like, weird showgirls. That's quite funny. They love yeah. that, you know, a bit of cross-dressing. A few of her young gay mates went fully over the top with everything sequin on the faces and white mm. faces and mime and all that. Most of the girls there mm. were dressed in a style which I really feel... I can only adequately describe as Bulgarian hooker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sort of burlesque, isn't it? No disrespect to those in <laughs> Bulgaria working in that particular industry, but it's like wearing you, next to nothing. And these yeah. are children I've seen growing up from yeah. school days. These are these are five and six year olds who once came around their house and I say, "Let me put a cartoon on for you." Mm. Are you all right? Don't worry, it's a sleepover. I don't mind taking you home in the middle of the night. I understand it's a bit scary being in someone else's house. Now they're turning up. They're wearing high heels, stockings, knickers, and small bras. <laughs> That's it. That essentially was seemed to be the dress code. That was their loose interpretation of circus and burlesque. <laughs> Stripper wear. And they were all dancing like strippers as well. Really? I walked in, I didn't know what I asked, what can I what's going on? And the guy at the front door he said, Best looking crowd we've ever had in. I said, You can go to the front door as well. Stop looking in. Get out of it. He said, No, no, no I'm not saying anything by it. I said, You are saying quite a lot by it, sir. Go tend the door. <laughs> <laughs> Gyrating and thrusting like nobody's business. But you said you danced to Lady Gaga, so did you dance to any of them? Or did I was, you, did you was, wait for the floor to it clear? Was, it was an effort to clear the floor, <laughs> and that was quite successful. Uh, but it's remarkable. And Harvey, you know, my son, who's Well, 15, he must have been in his element, Well, he surely. was there, and I said, you know, I know it's not, you're a bit awkward when you're not the same age as everyone at the party. So I said, here's a job for you, Harvey. For, for, for your sister, why don't you bring your camera and you can take pictures of everyone <laughs> at the party <laughs> so that she's got a record of them there. He said, that's great. I went in afterwards, didn't know, and I went, I went oh, I'm sorry about this, Harvey. <laughs> 
Just wear, <laughs> just wearing pants, you ain't yeah, no dead. It's great. You're listening to the Jonathan Ross podcast from BBC Radio Two. Uh, a sea lion, yes, named Snoopy, Snoopy the sea lion. <laughs> okay, got in trouble in California. You will not be able to guess why. Why were the police crossing I know. Snoopy the sea lion? I know. He slapped someone around the face with his flipper. No, you would think that's a possibility, and mm. I would imagine they would have to forgive that. It's almost like a crime of passion, isn't it? He can't help himself. It's like a Frenchman <laughs> shooting uh, his wife's lover. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to happen, right? And if a sea lion sees a big old face, he's going to slap it. No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't tell him off for that. <laughs> of course they would, wouldn't it's, they? It's sea lion nature. Um, right? Splashing someone. Mm, not really. Mm. Close, close. Oh, well. OK. If it's not slapping or splashing, okay. I don't know where I'm going. He bit a boy's leg. <laughs> yeah. Right? But then he managed to seize control of a speedboat and drive off. <laughs> so he attacked a child and then made good his escape. That's a smart sea lion, isn't it? Go on, I'd love to see that. That's a smart... It's little flippers on the control. He gave police the slip. He got... <coughs> they, I like the word here's slip. Here's the thing. What happened was, as far as I can understand is, he bit a boy's leg. Yep. And they said, no, you can't be doing that, Snoopy. Come on board. We'll put you on board this police officer's boat here and we're going to take, take you away. away. While they weren't looking, <laughs> he, grabbed for, he must have seen them doing it or something. Somebody managed to take the helm, <laughs> right? And it said here, according to an onlooker, the watch commander, who's a Sergeant Fritz von Wettberg, yeah. he said he managed to steer the boat and even started the throttle, <laughs> but we reached him before he got the lights on. Well, he's, he's safe he's, anyway. He put the lights on to well, warn people. Safety first with the sea lion. <laughs> They're very big on procedure. Mirror, signal, <laughs> manoeuvre. He's not going to just go off w- willy-nilly. No. He's not one of those sea lions. You're thinking of seals. <laughs> I just love, I've got this image of a seal. He's not reckless. Start. It's a sea lion. <laughs> Sorry, sea lion. <laughs> it's not for nothing are they called the lion of the sea, you know. No. <laughs> They're king-like in there, both their demeanour and their ability to steer a police craft. <laughs> I'd love to see that, eh? Yeah. Go on. Wouldn't it be great if he'd, before he did it, though, he just cheekily yeah. reached over the side, took the bloke's cap, put it on. <laughs> just to add insult to injury. Just wore the cap. Radio 2. Of course, there's Honor kind of acting a role, because she's never fallen from grace, and nor will not she. Yet. In reality, no. Well, you say not yet. I think you've had a pretty good run then. I don't think if it happened now, you wouldn't be too bothered, would you, Honor? Uh, that sounds lovely. I like the sound of it, because that reminds me of... Uh, we were talking briefly when the record was on about uh, there's the film um, uh, The Umbrellas of Sherbrooke with uh, the gorgeous Kathleen de And, yeah. of course, she sings... Uh, they sing If You Leave Me Now, or what's the phrase? If You Go Away. If You Go Away. And that reminds yeah. me, it's got that tradition. It's kind of a spoken, sort of almost sad... Uh, reflective song yeah. that kind of thing it's a song song really yes did you ever see uh, any of those people did you ever uh, get to see those people who performed that kind of thing at the time live did you ever see Scott Walker or um... I didn't I remember seeing Lena Horne wow, yeah. singing New Fangled Tango which was without doubt the sexiest thing that's ever been sung. Not to be confused with Benny Hill's Milk Bald uh, Tango, I believe, <laughs> which is on his album. But you had that album about years ago. We mentioned the album with Kinky Boots on it, of course. Yes. With Patrick McNee. Are you in touch with pa- Patrick McNee? Does he... Do you know, we're very naughty. You know, sometimes at Christmas we yeah. do... Um, but you know, he's been in Palm Springs forever. Everybody <laughs> thinks that he went recently, but he went directly after... Our Avengers, yes. really. Wow. So, and that's a, well, great if you want, you know, if you're going to retire in comfort, that's a place to be, isn't it? Absolutely. Is it true in the papers this week there's been talk about him inviting you to a, for a nude game of tennis, a knock-up, uh, with no clothes on? Have you that's seen? right. <laughs> wow. What? Well, have you not seen this story? No, I haven't seen that story. Patrick apparently called on and said... Yes, well, I was there, and I said, you know, when are we going to meet? He said, well, I'm playing tennis, come up and see us, you know. Everything will be waving about, he said. I'm up and see us. Is it just a Palm Springs tradition, do we know, or is it just Patrick? It's a Patrick McNee tradition. I you see, that's what I want that's from what Steve. Wimbledon. That's what you want Steve to be. I hope he just kept the, the bowler hat on, that's it. Just for, <laughs> just for decorum, sake, and somebody keep his balls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Honor Blackburn is with us. I'm delighted. I was looking back at some of the, the parts, and the, you know, I, I don't know if you heard earlier, but I mentioned um, some of the things I'd like to talk about. Working with uh, Patrick McGowan in Danger Man. Yeah. Um, Roger Moore, The Saint. And that was a great period in British television. Yes, it? it was. Yes, I enjoyed it. I mean, one nipped in and nipped out of all sorts of things. Mm. And Roger Moore is still marching on, isn't he? God bless him. Still What's happening as ever. to Patrick McGoohan? I don't know. Patrick, Patrick McGoohan, sadly, is no longer with us. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. he passed sometime this year, I believe. Oh, right. Sean Connery was another co-star of yours, of course. But more than once, was he in Shalaka with you as well? Was that? Yes. yes I think. Nightmare film, that was. In which way? Because I suffered so much. Because I had to have this, what was tantamount to sand, poured in my face... Jewel shoved down my face. Not nice. And worse was I had six 
um, Spanish um, stuntmen all trying to pull my clothes off. Blimey. And nobody had... <laughs> No, I don't like your face. <laughs> well, I'm slightly. Well, <laughs> you're doing the hand gestures. There. I thought I thought the blouse was going to be loosened briefly. I thought I, thought, I know it's hot outside, and we're talking about Shalako and but let's face it, I'm no short on Connery. <laughs> you have the look of a Spanish stuntman about there. Everyone might be saying that, doesn't he? He looks a little bit like he, he could take a punch. <laughs> no, but he had snipped the seams, and so eventually bits of my flesh went with it. Oh blimey! And it really was a That's nightmare. That's not nice. Yes, um, but even so. So, uh, yeah, a fun film, and that was a hit, wasn't it? They were the hit movies. <clears throat> I think it was a hit. Reasonable, one, reasonable. Yeah. But I mean, it had uh, what's her name? Oh, called Bridget Bardot. Oh, Bridget. and Sean, and it was a very strange was she, film. Was, was she animal mad even then? Did you? Uh... No, she hardly spoke to anyone. Uh, she, when we made that, she'd recently attempted suicide twice, mm-hmm. and nobody left her alone. And she had an entourage around her, and one said good morning, good afternoon, that sort of thing. But that's all. You didn't get to talk to her at all. It couldn't have been less fair. So she's being guarded, and everyone's keeping an eye on her and giving all the love and attention. Meanwhile, you're being manhandled by six burly Spaniards. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's... that's yeah. I think you need to speak to your agent about that, even now, and say, what were you thinking? Um, I love the fact that you're you're still working and that you're still um, out there, and you're still delivering great performances as well. It, it's, uh, I'm assuming you have absolutely no intention of retiring. None. Good. Why should I? I'm not saying you should. <laughs> I mean, uh, all this retiring business, I don't know what's so good about it. Uh, we have a wonderful job. Well, I imagine you think your job's wonderful. I do. I don't know if Andy shares that. Uh, for <laughs> you, he, he, he's on the receiving end. <laughs> we have fun. Lots of lovely people. Enough spare time off if you want to do things and potter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, it's not like it involves heavy lifting, does it, really? So it's not like, yeah. you know... <laughs> <laughs> For me, that would be absolutely no good at all. Jonathan Ross, online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM, BBC Radio 2. On a black moment is with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to say we've been chatting... Uh, during the news, we were chatting about some of the uh, movies you've been in as well, of course, but I just noticed one real early one. I want to ask this whether you remember making this. A boy, a girl, and a bike. Uh. <laughs> 1949, and ah. you played Susie Bates. I got very saddle sore in that. I am <laughs> <laughs> That's your one memory, getting very yeah. saddle sore. Well, yes, that and the fact that that, that <laughs> must have been part of the reason that the British film industry went down the drain. <laughs> Was it not a good one? We spent six months up in Yorkshire waiting for the rain, waiting for the sun, <laughs> waiting for... Ah. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen that one. I'm going to track that one down. All of this is coming out again now, of course. You know, all these movies that years ago. <laughs> because I guess during the 60s and 70s, if people have missed it when it was released, unless they caught it on TV, they didn't get to see it again. Whereas then we had Think video what and DVD. Missed. Oh, well, now I tell you, there'll be people YouTubing <laughs> a boy, a girl, and a bike. Di like, Dawes in that. Oh, Diana Dawes. And Dors. Tony Newley in that. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's must see for the weekend yeah. for me. I'm yeah. going to find that. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, Danger Man. I mentioned, um, uh, what's her name? I mentioned uh, The Saint. But you were also in an episode of Columbo. Yes, I was. I loved Columbo. We were talking about just the other week, we, weren't we? Yeah, I think it was last week we talked And about your it. career, presumably you flew to America for that. You yeah, would, yeah. You would flip-flop between the yeah. United Kingdom and the United well, States. Well, you could tell but the terrible English accents in it because <laughs> it was supposed to be set in London. That, that was, episode was, was, was it? played in, yes, in the States. And I also remember the very first shot on the very first day... Uh, Richard Basehart was my husband and we were both famous actors and we had just killed this man the night before and we went to his house to talk to his butler his uh, I suppose it was his butler but <laughs> whoever looked after him his manservant yes, yes. and uh, to say uh, you know how sorry we were and all that and we <laughs> went up the steps and Willie Hyde White was playing the man <laughs> threw open the door smiling all over his face oh good morning this this and good morning this to that and I thought hold on sweetheart your your boss has just been killed last night what are you doing and that's the way he played the scene and Normally, I would say, what the hell do you think you're doing? But it was my first day yeah. on, on the picture. Politeness rules, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I shut up, and a fortnight later, 
somebody, uh, his second assistant, came in and threw scripts to us all and said, we're reshooting 26 or whatever it was. And Willie Hyde White said, oh, why are we doing that? I said, I can tell you exactly why. <laughs> and, and I said, why were you grinning all over the office? Oh, 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 was I, he said. <laughs> And he said, I never read the rest of the script. I only read my diary. You know but I, I, that would explain it, because whenever I'd see movies, I love seeing movies, but at the same time, he was a terrible ham, God bless him. Yes. And also, it was always exactly the same performance. Yes, exactly. He had one performance, which he gave in every film, no matter what was going on around him. Yes. But I like that about movies then. You know, you had these people who were stars, and when they turned up in the film, they were kind of minor stars, but, but they were there as a presence, and that's what they did. Yes. They did that yeah. thing. Um, what a great, it must have been a great period to be, to go to Hollywood in the 60s, in the 70s. It must have been, because that's when it was still, the studio yeah. system was still ruling, and, and films were being made differently to the way they're made now. I mean, there was a real yeah. kind of glamour attached to the business, wasn't there? Yeah. I, I made a picture with Mervyn Leroy. Sadly, it, it wasn't a good film. Uh, with Gene Seberg. And but it was a tragic number, and uh, Moiv was good at uh, the gangsters and stuff. Mm. You know, he was really tough. But I loved him, and he was great. And I told him that I couldn't say the script as it was; it was very American. So he said, "Okay, honey, sh- sh- tell me before, show me the dialogue before." And I never did. I said, "Let me do it for you, Mervyn." And he was lovely. We just had a ball. And I think it was one of the best performances I've ever done, but sadly the film didn't succeed. That so. must be, that must be uh, I'm sure that's something which is quite common, actors. They give a great performance in a movie which isn't as good as, yeah. the, as the film yeah. should be. And, it, and yeah. it must, that must be uh, difficult to deal with. Though. Yes, it was sad, because had it been successful, they were going to push me for some award and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it, it wasn't good. It was so funny. There was a guy called Sean Garrison who played opposite... Uh, um, Gene and he was just bless him impossible he was a singer and I don't know if this was his first acting job and it was two steps to the right two steps to the left one of those awful things that you watched going on because he couldn't do it and then on the night of the premiere down in Miami and I was with Mervyn and and we'd, we'd been doing press and stuff and we got to the club where we were having the party and Sean Garrison was up there singing like a bird mm. and absolutely wonderful. And Merv said, oh, God, we should have had him sing the damn part. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know uh, you're in many uh, movies, which I love and appreciate and watch again and again. When on TV, they're filmed. One of them, Jason and the Argonauts. Oh, yeah. Wow, Jason the Argos mm. with the great and being made. And I believe that was directed by Ray Harryhausen as well as him doing the effects. No, it was Ray. directed by John, Don Chaffee. Don Chaffee. So he's but been Ray the Harryhausen did all the... All the hard work. Yes, all <laughs> the hard work. Yes, uh, well, what a great film. But how, and how was that when you're working in scenes? Because I don't think you have many, but there are some scenes when you're working against, I think they called it Super Dynatron or something, the effects technique with the stop motion. Uh, did you have any scenes where you're working against things that weren't actually there? No, I didn't. I mean, one of the things I remember was uh, they were going to make a model of me for the prow of the ship Mm -hmm. and there are ridiculous photographs hanging around somewhere with me in my bra and pants (laughs) like this (laughs) with my arms flung out Titanic style ready yeah ready to sail I don't know who's got those pictures I should imagine they're in a private (laughs) car somewhere (laughs) along with the boots you wore in the event yeah (laughs) Anna, where were you from originally? Where were you born in London? I was born in Plaster. In Plaster, in East London. And you had, so presumably, you had elocution lessons. You had something which changed. Yes, I did. Really. Yes, I did. On my 16th birthday, my mm. father offered me a bicycle or elocution lessons. And I knew which he wanted me to choose. And I think I did too. But mm. anyway, it opened an entirely new world to me. So. And as we know, you got, saddle, you got saddle sore later yeah. in life anyway yes. when you were filming uh, <laughs> a girl, a bike, and uh, an inconvenient... A boy and a bike. A boy and a bike and a Brazil on the front of a boat. <laughs> um, have you been back? Do you, have you visited your, your childhood home? Do you know? No, what? I haven't. I, I, I must go. I must go. You should go. Well, well, let's wait till the day they put the plaque on. If there wasn't one there already, let's uh, let's campaign for that and get the blue plaque Absolutely. on. Absolutely, Cumberland <laughs> Road. Yeah, remember, yeah. will you? Cu- well, you know, who knows? It might not even be there anymore. I think it is. I looked it up in the A to Z, and it still exists. Was it a new edition of the A to Z? Was it one you've had in the car for about five years? 
<laughs> Don't mean to say it's not yeah, gone. No, I'm just saying you, you, everything changes so quickly these days. You've got to be up to the minute. Because <laughs> when I last went down to where I grew up, which is in Leytonstone, although I spent a lot of my my sort of young adulthood in that part of East mm. London, it's so it's so dramatically changed. I barely recognise it. Yes, I mean, it's I such know. a different place now. It's like Little Hampton, where we used to go as children, and. I can't recognise that anymore. Wow. It's rather sad. Mm, but, you know, change is going to happen. That's the one thing that doesn't change is that change will happen. That's bordering on the profound. <laughs> <laughs> or confusing. What Don't get the... too excited. Oh, I'm hold it. Excuse me while I write that what down. Was that a change is what? No, I'm writing it down for Anna. She wants me to write that down. She's, <laughs> she, wants to, she wants to quote that next time she plays new tennis with Patrick <laughs> McNee. <laughs> Um, the Avengers and the Bond movie, the two things that always follow you around, I guess, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, always. What is it about those, you think, that really clicked with people? Well, I think the Avengers um, broke new bounds, really, because she was the first wor- person who'd ever done Judah. It was always that thing that women will never be the equal of men because they're not strong enough and all that. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> excuse me, you had this woman who could hurl people about I mean, because judo is wonderful that you can only use it if somebody uses force against you. Use the opponent's so, strength against yes. him or herself, yeah. Yes. So um, it made a great impression, and the black leather made a certain impression. Mm. I'm sure you got a certain following because yes, of those two components. Yes. So there's a lot of men out there who like the idea of being bossed around by a lady in black. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it was kind of... It was more subtle than it would be today, wasn't it? I mean, it was sort of... Well, our relationship, subtle. Patrick's and mine, was... Great fun and very saucy, and everybody was waiting for me to succumb to his charms. And it would have been disaster had I, had I ever done of course, so. Of course, mm. uh, I have somewhere. I have uh, you know, they had some toys and stuff at the time, and I have the um, steed walking stick that I was given for Christmas as a child. Oh, it's really? not. I can't walk with it anymore because it's designed for like a seven-year-old. So I'd have to be stooping. But it's a, <laughs> it's a plastic thing, and you used to push it, and it would fire red bullets at the end. But you guys didn't get any any cut from the merchandising, did you? you didn't get any any. No, nothing. No, no, wow. nothing. What about the Bond movie? Of course, the famous name, and it's still you know it's a it's not not even really double on Tondo. It's <laughs> Pussy Galar. It's a, <laughs> it's about as blatant a Bond person's name as you can. Have. But at the time, you must have all thought, how can we get away with this? Oh, I didn't worry very much about that, but I was made to worry in in uh, America in the promotion tour because there were two or three interviews who wouldn't say it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't even say no, it. No, they wouldn't say it. Wow. <laughs> so. But they stuck to their guns. Yeah, so... Sean Connery, I've been told I remind people of a young Sean Connery. He had an animal... <laughs> huh? Don't laugh. He had a... Oh, no, that's rude. A bit rude. Uh, he had an animal, animal magnetism. An animal yeah. magnetism yes. and one hell of a chest on him. Yes. What a good looking hunk of man. Well, he was. What was he? The. You, what was he? The. He was Mr. Something, wasn't he? Yeah, Mr. Universe. Mr. Universe, I think. Yeah. Mr. Universe, yeah. After being a milkman, wasn't he? Wasn't he Did he have anything of a Scottish accent at all left? I mean, obviously, the one on screen, but did he have a broad accent? Did he ever slip into the full Glaswegian with you? No, not while he was with me. Mm. He didn't. Maybe I didn't bring it on. You know why? He was probably on best behaviour with you, Anna. Do you think? You should have given him a little bit of plasto and he'd have given you a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> he'd have given you a bit of the gorbals right back. <laughs> uh, what is, tried it. What does the summer hold for you? Where do you spend your time in the summer? Do you spend it here in the UK? Do you tra- travel at all? I, I have a house in Spain and that's where we go. And now my, my children have two glorious children each. And I shall be with them. So Grandma will be looking after the kids. Yeah, that must be the nicest thing, isn't it? Yes, it's heaven. Oh, so Grandma it's has heaven. somewhere in Spain with the kids. Yes, wow. absolutely. Well, that will be fantastic. I hope. I'm sure you're going to have a lovely summer. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been it's, a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to spend some time in your company. Honor Blackman single, the star who helped fell from graces out. Will you be performing? Are you going to do any sort of a little supper club gig, maybe, with this and a few other <laughs> choice uh, chansons? No, 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 not yet. <laughs> Come on, don't be so lazy. <laughs> I tell you what, if you it's play holiday your, time. if you play your cards, I'll get Andy to get the uh, to get that rainbow track out for you. You can put that in the repertoire because <laughs> <laughs> I can see how much you like that one. How lovely to see you! Thank you so much for joining us. The lovely honour, Blackman, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Ross online, on digital, and on eighty-eight to ninety-one FM.
BBC Radio 2. Uh, OK, uh, did you watch the tennis last week? Did you see the... Uh, I did, yes. Oh, well, of course. It was a long one, wasn't it? It was a long one, was it? 1860? It was end, too it? long. A number of people I know who had to be placed... I was speaking to someone the day, and he, that he was away, and he was meant to be leaving with his wife to drive back, and he was sitting there, and they were going, come on, we want to go on, Mr Traffic. He's going, yeah, five more minutes. And, of course, it wasn't. It was about another hour. Yeah. Very long, very long. Jimmy Carr was around my house to watch it. Was he? He came home. We had a game in the morning. Mm. Very frustrating game. What, for you or him? For me. He's he a lost? Ni- he's a nightmare to play against. Why? Chips. Chips, chips, boring, boring, boring. But that's he's sussed your game. That's uh, the whole point, isn't it? Nah, boring. <laughs> Here's the thing: if you're listening, Jimmy, play like a man for once, will you? <laughs> but he just chips all the time. Yeah, all the time. And then finally, you make a mistake because you're hitting it back. You know, you uh, get bored. So he just he plays very defensively. Chip, chip, just waiting for your the chips, unforced chips, error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Bloody a nightmare. <laughs> so I was furious playing that. <laughs> And I, and I do, as I'm sure you can work out when I'm playing tennis, more so than I used to, I do a running commentary all the way through now. <laughs> I do. Great shot from Ross. Oh, awesome <laughs> shot. Even if I do say so myself, fabulous shot. Oh, oh dear. You, you got lucky. Well, that's enough to be annoying anybody. No great shot. Another great, back. another winner from Ross. Another great shot. Terrific smash. <laughs> oh, lucky ball from Carr. <laughs> lucky. You know? And you got to do the commentary on that. Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, he was around, and then afterwards he sp- stayed with me to watch it. Yeah. So we'd go in, we had a quick shower each, mm. separate rooms. Mm. And then uh, sit down. Jane made some lunch. Sitting down to watch it. Of course, immediately I'm sitting down. After going to this, I start falling asleep. <laughs> Jimmy Carr keeps waking me up, shaking yeah. me. He said, "This is one of the greatest sporting events you can possibly see." You don't. Mm. I said, oh, "I'm watching. I'm watching." <laughs> Half asleep. He had to leave early. Bizarrely, you know why he had to go? He had to miss the end of it. Probably had a gig. He was opening guessing. for someone. Guess who he was opening for? I don't know. Another comedian or a band? Just have a guess. Who he was opening for? Oasis. Killers. <laughs> Why is he opening for the Killers? I don't know. Why but would Jimmy Carr? What if imagine if you're in Jimmy the Carr. audience for the Killers, and then comes Killers Jimmy are going to start. Killer, then out comes Jimmy Carr. Hello, Hello. can't believe my luck. <laughs> He's a joke. Oh, nice to see you. Oh, Killers only twenty minutes. Uh, thought I'd do a couple of jokes. <laughs> it's a big room. Let's do a Mexican wave. <laughs> I asked him, I said, how did it go? He said, just about got away with it. Yeah, just imagine. about got away with it. Very yeah. odd. Why do they want that? I mean, no well, disrespect to Jimmy, but if you are, you want to see the killers, you don't want anyone on beforehand, do you? He doesn't look like he could even be a member of the killers, no, does he? No, it's not, like it's not a Brandon had, Flowers, know, is he? You get someone like, if Russell was opening for a rock band, he looks a bit like a rock person, yes. you get away with it. Mm. Jimmy Carr comes out, he looks like he works for a building society. <laughs> Hello, I just thought I'd take a couple of minutes before the killers come on to tell you about our new preferential loan rate. <laughs> Can't believe you're luck. Yeah. 6% APR. Mm. Yeah, they come the killers. You know, that's that's what you feel like you're going to get. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, but what a what a fantastic effort. Yeah, uh, my heart. I felt for Andy Wallach. Uh, yeah, I, I did. But there was something I think you know for him to take that record. I think was worth worthy of his. But we had him in here, and he what a charming and lovely oh, Andy, man, Robert, Robert, yeah, what a lovely. sweet man. And I wanted him because I love the Federer, and yeah. I wanted Federer to beat Sampras's uh, record because you know never never liked his game at all. <laughs> well, I think he had a little bit more to it than is, that. He could hold the racket very well. I don't even like the way he's losing his hair. Even that's annoying me. <laughs> Do something about it. Either shave it off or buy a wig. <laughs> right? You know you're going to be on TV. You're a Wimbledon champion. Mm. Do it one way or the other. Do something. <laughs> or buy a cap. Right? <laughs> so he's sitting there. I didn't yeah. like the look of him. You didn't like the look of him. Uh, what about but, Bjorn Borg? His hair's gone a bit bonkers as well, isn't it? That's like a big plume he's got on the top of his head. You've got to love Bjorn Borg. <laughs> You've got to love Bjorn Borg. You've got to love Macron. All these great guys from the 70s in their tight shirts. And then Boris sitting there. Boys, I like to believe <laughs> Boris's commentary is great, but it's like the Terminator doing commentary, isn't it? it is. I think if he do not win, he will be back. <laughs> At one stage, he tried. He saw uh, there was a, I think uh, there was a movie director in the crowd. I can't remember who it was. He saw him went the great uh, movie director. He maybe make a movie of this. <laughs> and then there was a shot of uh, Russell Crowe went. Ah, he could star in the movie of this. He was absolutely <laughs> thrilled that he managed to put two people together. You could see him sitting back thinking, job done. Job done. That's it. That's me safe next year for the commentary. Job done. There's the movie director. Yeah, says, uh, oh, Kate Winslet. She could be in the movie too. She could be the bald girl. Radio 2. That's a lovely sound. Who's that? <laughs> Huh? What do you mean? Why what do you that? ask that question? Was it the Beatles? No, you always uh, do that. That was Oasis, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The uh, hugely talented Noel Gallagher is with us right here, right now. Do you see what I did there? Very good. Okay, well done. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Songs, I, that. That. I just thought yeah. of that. I just yeah. thought of that. Okay. That. Okay. <laughs> so what's the story? Uh, more more, more glory. <laughs> hey? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, some might say, Jonathan. That, yeah. Wow. Oh, there we go. We're, we're, <laughs> we're on a roll. Let's go to an advert before we lose it. You nearly did it as well, then. Did we? Oh, you're on a roll. Roll. Oh dear! Oh. Oh, he kills it. <laughs> Ten years I've had to work. No, there you are. That was quite good. Uh, Roll, wasn't it? Noel, how are you? How's the tour going? How are you enjoying it? Uh, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Right near the end now, I guess, isn't it? 
Uh, August, th well, the British tour finishes after after Wembley, then we do V Festival at the end of August, and then officially we finished on the 31st of August in Milan. And then what, after that, a little break, a little rest time? A big holiday for me, and then uh, I think, you know, Liam's doing his clothing thing. He's got a fashion line, he's got clothing coming, hasn't he? Yes, he he's has. He's always been the best dressed member of the band. <laughs> uh, will you be wearing any of his clothing items? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, have, you, have you seen any of his clothing items? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wears it all the time. Yeah. He wears like the parkery things he makes. He wears right? all. He wears. He wears it all, down to the socks. <laughs> He's all kitted out. So it's nice stuff. Uh, well, should we move on? <laughs> so, so it's just not your. But you're quite. You're should, quite. Um, I think we'll move on before we give the tabloids any more headlines. <laughs> so you're so, quite uh, utilitarian in your approach to clothing, aren't you? Well, it's a fu it's, it's a function. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, function, I, I yeah. dress because nudity is outlawed in the yeah, street. You know yeah. what I mean? Other mm -hmm. than that, I don't, I'm not really minded about. But you have clothes. a style. You do have a style. It's a kind of. Well, it's a kind of what is it? A kind of rough and ready. Well, wealthy idiot style. No, no, no. You, <laughs> a bit you like got, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm far more flamboyant. Look at that. Check those out. Uh, well, I, you know what? I mean, I couldn't couldn't miss them, and I, I wasn't mm. going to. I wasn't going to mention it. No. There's but um, with them wheels. They're called no. wheels, apparently. No. What? These? Yeah, apparently, they said no. no it's wheels. Your no, wheels. The red patent leather booties. Boots. <laughs> that, uh, a <laughs> boxer might wear. That, I always think. That, that are hiding. Equally as hideous a pair of socks. Oh, that's one of my later hosen. You're lucky you got off lightly. I do like that look, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a good look. And then, of course, with the green jacket. What's wrong with that? What's well, on it? I don't know. <laughs> I bet Liam would like it. Yeah, well, yeah, he would. He would. All right, now, that's enough about Liam. Stop talking about Liam. Uh, okay, Reverend of the Makers have been supporting you. The Enemy have been supporting you. Kasabian, you've had a fantastic, like, there are yeah. only a couple of bands who have been supporting you who I haven't heard of. Twisted Wheel, I've never heard anything by them. And although I've heard of the Peth, because that's Reese fans, yeah. Right, isn't it? I haven't heard any of the music. What kind of sound do those two have? Uh, Twisted Wheel are a bit kind of like the Jam and the Pogues. It's quite frantic, kind of three-minute punk songs. I like uh, the sound of they're it. They're managed by our management, which is why they've managed to wangle themselves <laughs> on the tour. But are they good? You like the sound? Uh, yeah, they are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, well, they're from Manchester as well. Are they John. signed by anyone yet? Uh, I think. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, they're signed. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've have you heard? Them? Yeah. Yeah, uh, they've got a great tune called "She's a Weapon." That's She's brilliant. a weapon, and um, the Peth uh, sound like uh, well, there's eleven in the band. If you wow. can believe that, uh, when they were playing with us on stage in Cardiff, it looked like Woodstock. <laughs> but you know what? That's never going to uh, work. <laughs> no, and they all talk Welsh. Oh, right. And um, obviously, Reese is one of the four lead singers. Oh, and uh, he actually done the gig on crutches because, uh, and he didn't break his leg in a drinking accident. He was tackled by a six-year-old in the park playing football. <laughs> it's, this, uh, this sounds like the worst kind of uh, nightmare imaginable. <laughs> but it's but the, the music sounds like uh, I would say the Happy Mondays, Black Grape kind of thing. So it's got a good, it's a good it's kind a of groove. party sound to yeah, start. It's grooving the and there's a lot of shouting uh, and a lot of waving your. Fist in the air. And of the band you've had supporting you, and uh, maybe you can't be too uh, the, too bootloose here, but which ones have gone down best with the Oasis fans? Because presumably that's who's mainly coming along. I'm sure Kasabian, some Kasabian fans have gone along who also like Oasis, and they've gone, but mainly it's Oasis yeah, fans. Yeah, I mean, who... I'd, I'd have thought us, the enemy, and Kasabian draw the same kind of crowd anyway. Yeah, but yeah. for me, well, it's always going to be Kasabian for me. That with They've just had their biggest hit with that song, Fire. Um, and it, it's been going mental for them but also for the enemy as well you know everybody's been um pleasantly surprised by it yeah uh, <laughs> i do like the enemy they are the smallest band i think uh currently touring the uk I aren't they? yeah i think one of them is could officially work for a circus <laughs> yeah <laughs> cleaning the elephant <laughs> right? with a small step ladder uh, um, and they uh, what's it tom the singer is he, he points a lot and shouts when he talks he doesn't yeah. talk to you shouts to you he's quite intense isn't he yeah he's great but man. they're great good. we had him in here last week they're a fabulous group of young men uh, I, have you got a farm yet no have I got a farm yeah no come on you've got to get a farm the well, rock got a farm actually got a farm it's nothing to do with me the have rock and roll farm? lifestyle has to be dictates to me that you get to a certain stage in the UK you need to buy a farm yeah, you, need to, you need to go that route I want you need to get a farm yet. no 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 I'm not. No. Have, you got, have you got a farm no, mind no. you're not rock and roll are you? No. <laughs> hence the boots oh. <laughs> I'm more disco <laughs> <laughs> no I haven't got a farm and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't want a farm why I would you not want a farm well, what would I do with it what's wrong with you What's wrong with me? Yeah, ask yourself that question. I was born in the inner city slums of Manchester. Exactly. So now you've made a few beans, you want to get out there and get a farm. I've got an house out in the sticks with a big, with big. Uh, That'll big, do then. Because I like to think it's like imagine the old days. Black Sabbath came out from tour, right? right. And uh, Ozzy had to go out to his farm somewhere. Well, Roger's got a, he's 
was it Trout Farm or something? Yeah, yeah, Trout, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trout Farm. Has he still got his Trout Farm? I think he probably still has. Yeah, yeah. He has, yeah, yeah. It's the kind of thing I have your earmark for. I just be. The, I like living. In, I like living in the city. I like weekends out in the uh, in the country, but I couldn't do it all the time. Oh, I'd like. I think you're in a farm, going no, slowly no, mad. No, no, no. <laughs> as rock the only reason should. I would buy a farm would be to start a festival. Well, that's yeah, not a bad that's idea. Not a good idea. Yeah, you yeah. Can do that. Um, do you? Uh, what do you do hobby wise? Do you have anything? Do you collect anything? Have you ever made a pot in your life or a vase? <laughs> you know that kind of craft. I've never, you ever made, made any pot. You ever colour? Do you colour in? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do hardly dot to dots. No. Yeah, it's good. It's a stress uh, well, buster for a hobby. Actually, my, do you know what? My I'm lucky enough that my hobby is my job. Uh, oh, but it's I don't. Boring. Nah, it's but boring this, this is the truth, though. Yeah, but um, I watch a lot of football. What's the what's t- I don't really oh, have any hobbies. Boring. Do you do a Sudoku? Can you do the cryptic no. Sudoku? No. You ever tried one? No, I don't, I don't even know. I lo- I've, I've seen one on the back of the back of the newspaper and just thought, I don't even know what it. What, what is it? What it's, a, it's a puzzle. You try and put in the so numbers. You add, yeah. you, add, you add all the numbers together. Think of a vegetable, and then yeah, that's it. And yeah. then you get the. You're being rude. What is it? I'm not being rude. You're being do, you, rude about do you do sudoku? Yeah, I'm very good at sudoku. Why? Because it's a, a stress buster. Aren't they, aren't, they, aren't they doing like a, a letter one? I'm told. Yeah, a letter sudoku. Kazuko, I think it's called. Is it really? I don't know. You've got too much time on your hands. No, you? listen, you've got loads of time on your hands. What are you doing no, with your time? I'm, I'm, strumming a few, right. ripping off a few songs and adding new words to it. <laughs> yeah, but that's very, that's, that, well, that takes a lot of time, though. <laughs> let's write a song now. No, let's write a song now. Okay, what have you, you got a guitar with you? No, I've got a guitar. I've for this very reason. <laughs> I thought you'd carry looking. Hold it, Kasabian, come back in. <laughs> we need to buy your melodica. <laughs> let's put some music on, okay. and when we come back, Noel will have written another anthem for a new generation. <laughs> You're listening to the Jonathan Ross podcast from BBC Radio 2. Well, it's a big land of 1,000 dances. Exactly oh, 1,000. I'll have that off by the end of time. <laughs> yeah, that, we were just writing a new song now by What's Oasis. it called? Land, land of 1,000 dances. dances. I'll, I'll write one called uh, Land of 100 Dances. <laughs> 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 land of 100 Dances. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> <do> that. <laughs> That's not That's my school. Write that, that down. down. <laughs> write it down. There you go. Give that Liam for his new shirt range. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Noel Gallagher is with us, ladies and gentlemen. He is the frontman and uh, leading uh, talent in Oasis, uh, possibly the biggest Brit- British band of the last like, sort of 15 years or so. Would that be fair? You and yeah. Blur, of course, were next and they've reformed now. They yeah. went away for a while. Now they've reformed. Who's the best band now? Blur or Oasis? I'd have thought, uh, if I'm going to put my money on it, Kasabian. <laughs> <laughs> You're genuinely a big fan of this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good I love them. Okay, uh, how's life uh, as a father? How are you enjoying uh, that kind of side of your life? Brilliant. Yeah. It's great. How old is your baby now? Uh, I've got a daughter that's nine. I've got a lad sure, that's yeah. two in September. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's great fun. And do you get to spend much time? Do they come on tour with you? Are they allowed to I don't. I don't really like... When well, my family come out on tour, they're, they're all... You've always got to make sure they're looked after and, you know... Was my other stuff. Also, there. you can't get on with stuff as, in the same way, can you? You can't enter. I can't get on with hang, hanging around backstage, reading yeah. the papers, and smoking. Yeah, yeah which no. is what you want to do. Which is, well, that's why you join a band, isn't it? Wear sunglasses and smoke. Do you like a <laughs> Do you like a regular tea, or do you have like an Earl Grey tea? Yorkshire, or like a Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire tea. Very, very straightforward. Strong. Yeah, Yorkshire. Absolutely, Yorkshire. Oh, yeah. Do you like a chip sandwich? Well, I tell you what, I like about the Yorkshire tea is somebody has invented the hard water tea bag for the London area only. I've heard of this. No. Unbelievable. And is there a and difference? Yes, there is, because when I go out to uh, uh, this is what I one of my other houses uh, out in the countryside, <laughs> the farm, I use the Yorkshire Gold because we're in a soft water area. Ah, Yorkshire right. Gold, he's got and the... Other, this is it! This is what I was hoping for. Mm. The mundanity of real life oh, when yeah, you get to yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting Yorkshire. the chickens in and they're making your own Yorkshire tea. This is exactly what <laughs> I want. Got As you go slightly, he's got a farm. <laughs> he's got several, he's just lying. <laughs> this is what I want. One of his farms has loads of people are making trousers for his brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, well that's good to know then. So you're not, but you are. Do you have any kind of a taste? Are you someone who sticks to kind of the taste of things that you grew up in perversely because you don't want to be seen as having changed, or are you open to new things? And that's great, regardless of where it comes from. Regardless, of it might be seen, uh, you know, from an expensive area or more kind of like sophisticated. Well, I'd, I'd never had a Chinese meal until I was about twenty, twenty-two. And I'd never. I'd, but I'd, why was that? There must have been Chinese restaurants near you in Manchester. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, it's just. Why, it you just a, hadn't done that. It's what like Chinese food? Well, I understand what? this. I What's hadn't Chinese had. Chinese food. I hadn't had till I was about twenty. Right. Actually, and I loved Indian. First time I had a Chinese one. So, you know what? I was. This is a sad thing. Before I went out, I was so scared I wouldn't find anything I wanted to eat. I had two toast toppers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember. I remember when I uh, coming to um, coming to London early on and. Uh, kind of going out with this girl and she wanted to go out one night for dinner and it, I, it ne- I didn't know what it, I said 
what do you mean go out for dinner? <laughs> for the start, for the start, it's called <laughs> tea up north. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they say, well, go out for dinner. Where to? It's like a restaurant. A restaurant? <laughs> a restaurant? <laughs> and what, what do you do in these uh, restaurants? Yeah. Well, you eat food and then you drink. And it's like, yeah, but I got. You don't know the routine. You've never you know. been to one. You don't know what you're going to do. No, the, I know. no we'll, just, we'll just go to the pub and get a package. It's a weird <laughs> thing, isn't it? But I remember not knowing what to do in a restaurant. Strange, isn't it? You just sit down there and wait. What, all that time, not doing anything, in the same yeah. chair. And the, guy, and the guy comes over and the first thing he says is, can I get anything to drink? I'm like, this is a restaurant. <laughs> Come here to eat. <laughs> uh, oh, so which a was pint the, of bitter, please. <laughs> which was the first uh, meal you went for as a grown-up under your own steam? On my own steam. Was it Chinese or Indian? I think it's a Chinese. Yeah. I think it was with this girl. No, 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 no. I think it might. No, 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 no. The, with the girl. Actually, didn't end up going for the meal with the girl. It's just like there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so then, I don't know. Mm. What do you do? Talk while. You, see, I, my, when I when I go out for dinner with my missus, she gets really. I do that. I do that northern thing of when the food comes, I don't say a word <laughs> yeah. until it's eaten. <laughs> yeah, I just eat it, yeah. and then I'll eat it really, really quick. I'm not drinking <laughs> that cheese made with hard and water. Then, and then and then <laughs> Sarah will be cutting one bit of asparagus into eighteen pieces, and I'll just be like, Whoa, wallop, sharing, wallop, wallop, sharing wallop. emotions and yeah. that kind of thing. Talking about the day. Yeah, have yeah. you got any creme brulee, geezer? No. Nope. Yeah. Can't wait. Have it's you ever had? Uh, did you used to at those restaurants where they had like a little uh, a special dessert card and they would do things like an ice cream, an orange sorbet served in an orange? You know, they'd scoop <laughs> out an orange. It was from the freezer. They had that at my local Indian. I thought well, that was class. Mm. I did like believe the, it. Do like the the mints afterwards. That, and oh. that's another thing after the mint after the after the meal. The idea of finishing a meal with a chocolate with, with a chocolate mint. It's a great idea. Isn't it? Yeah, but when you yeah, but when you're twenty when you're twenty and you're from you know from Manchester, it's like what mints now? Yeah. Now <laughs> that's one of your albums, wasn't it? Mints now. <laughs> <wasn't it? laughs> it's a Julie Clary's autobiography, wasn't it? Hey, <laughs> yeah, there we go. He has a lost it ladies and gentlemen <laughs> alright so uh, now solo album when's that happening there isn't happening come on it isn't happening come on some might say that they're all solo albums they've just got the band's name on the front uh, you can, I, I, I what do was that noise you made then it's like a couple of cows <laughs> He thought he was back on the farm for a minute. Mm. Uh, but I keep hearing about the possibility of a sudden... Come on, everyone does it. You've got to do it. Get, let's get in touch with your feminine side, maybe. Get more personal. Get more intimate. Call it Noel, up close. Just you on the cover with the guitar, looking a bit <laughs> <In> a farm. <laughs> looking like you looked when that thing dropped on your foot when you were a kid. Uh, well, like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in pain. Yeah, the no. pain of creation coming out of you. No, no, no. There's no plans to do anything after this tour apart from going on a but, holiday. But when you write stuff, do you ever write stuff and think, OK, this is a great song, I think I've written a great song here, it's not white for Oasis? Oh yeah, I've got I've got lots tons of songs which wouldn't really. And where are they? They're on my music farm. Well, what are we going to do? With Gloucestershire. What are we, we, we going to do? With we them? can farm them out. Why don't we give them a duffy? Do you know? Funnily enough. I'd rather trap my finger in the door. <laughs> I like Duffy. I like the way she rides that bike in that advert. Oh, it's colossal, isn't it? It's, it looks like a duck riding a bike. It's, I've it's never just, seen it. It's like, she looks like she's leapt out of a pond. But if you think of the premise of the advert, <laughs> she's gone off for the encore. I'll just go and get a Diet Coke on the drop handlebar racer, <laughs> which actually don't exist anymore. But on your New York tour, Liam did, did that and forgot to come back, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the better gigs, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. OK, uh, now, America, you're still not that huge in America, are you? Sold out Madison Square Gardens four times, I don't know. Well, bigger than you, let's put it that way. Hang on, don't suddenly get defensive. It's not. I'm not having a go. Sold out yeah. the Hollywood Bowl. All right, yeah. all right, I'm not having a go. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're not as big there as you are here. Sold out the Hollywood no, Bowl. No, 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 no. Yeah, but they're Madison not as big there. No, they're not as big there as they are No, here. no, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't sell a couple of million albums there. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, are you? is that something on the horizon? You think, we're going to go out there and give it a year and try and do no, it? Like we, Slade. Slade tried to do it and they never made it. They no. went out there I, don't, I mean, I, th I think I think too much pressure is put on this thing about trying to. You know, we kind of we had our first three albums were huge out there, and then our record company suddenly realised, hang on a minute, these lot are really unprofessional. <laughs> and they're like, if they're not going to bother turning up to the MTV awards when we'd won, we've won everything, and not bother turning up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So MTV said, right, well, if you're not going to play the game, we're, we're not going to play your videos. And then our American record label, who these are the other bands on the roster, the other big acts, Mariah Carey. And Celine Dion Ooh. and Oasis, right? Yeah. These were the three big acts. So one of them's going to get the drop, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, uh, we kind of yeah. Liam gobbed at somebody at the MTV. I remember I seeing that. that. That did seem unwise, even by uh, his uh, standards. But at the same time, I, well, suppose, I just, I, I, it was the spirit what, of the just, moment. One word, one word is what I said to him. Why? Yeah. Mm. Why? Yeah. Mm. He was just trying to be a bit. Why? Punk, wasn't he? He was but a bit, why, you know, I think he was. He felt out of sorts, didn't he? he felt a little bit out of place. I just why spitting? Mm. Why? It's never nice. Swear, you know. I don't know spitting. 
But what? Not even like a, spe- a long. <laughs> yeah. a it was long the sort of thing, thing that a tramp would do. Yeah, would not it? Yeah. Got, yeah. I, I'm, but but the but the the, the picture's colossal because he's wearing a brown suit. <laughs> I remember well. I remember seeing it going out, and I think we all said at home. I turned to my wife and said, "Why? <laughs> yeah, why, why the suit?" I mean, that? It was one of those moments. Well, no, why this bit? Why and it, but then I said to him, "Why are you doing that?" He said, "Well, we shouldn't have been doing it anyway." It's like, but when oh. we when we got asked to do it, I remember you going, "Yeah, it'd be brilliant." It's like, why don't you just say? We're he he had a lot of other issues at the time, though, didn't he? He seems to resolve them. He seems to have worked them out through his seamstress skills now. <laughs> he has indeed. He's, he has. His t-shirt manufacturing plant. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, uh, so you have a holiday coming up, mm. you've got a break there. I think, uh, I suspect in a few years' time, you're going to move on to something else. I think you're going to do something either like a rock opera, right? I can imagine right. you, or okay. doing so, you know, something like that, or maybe a movie score, something like that. I can imagine you turning your I was actually up thinking up. of doing, and I don't I run this idea by it, of a, a reggae opera but based on Star Wars. Why? Well, the first... The, no, because <laughs> we're doing the trilogy. The first one would be called Jar Wars. Yeah, oh, very good. Right. He's sold it, he's talked this through. Come on, this I've, better be good. I've had this one. Jar Wars. Uh, yeah, right. The Empire Smokes Black. Yeah, very good, I like <laughs> yeah, that already. Right. And then Return of the Dread Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that marvellous note, we're going to say goodbye to you <laughs> and goodbye to Noel's career as a stand-up comedian. <laughs> Great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Noel Gallagher, ladies and gentlemen. This is a free podcast from the BBC. For more information, you can go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash radio 2.